In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over glandulotrichome structure and biosynthesis to give you a better appreciation for the formation of this plant structure. All right, let's get into a review of the articles. So there are two articles. So this is the first one here. Um, again, some great information provided in these, as well as the citation provided here, as well as in the description. So the first one, and then this is the second one. And based on the slide, I'll cite what source it came from. So first off, kind of like this general summary slide here, uh, that kind of gives you an idea of uh, a little bit of the experimentation as well as the progression of plants. How long they spend in kind of that long day vegetative stage compared to the short day conditions where they're flowering. Also, when the researchers recommend applying that silver nitrate treatment as we look at the development of the growth cycle of the plant, as well as some other uh, scientific studies that they um, looked at and did. Just good for timing and good general information. Now looking at the um, researchers and what they provide you with the kind of the general timelines there in more of a word form, and I provide just some general pictures here, but cannabis does exhibit a relatively short growth cycle lasting only about two to five months. The seedling stage is defined for somewhere in that three to 10 day range post germination. In the vegetative growth stage, we're growing the leaves and the plant structure and the roots. It's about 20 to 30 days. Uh, and this is when the plants focus really on that root and shoot development. Rapid growth of the upper part of the plant is maintained for 10 to 30 days, and then of course there's the focus on flower. And pre-flowers, we can see right here, our shoots as cuttings are suitable for asexual uh, propagation. The flowering is initiated in cannabis can be induced by subjecting the plants to a short day conditions. Again, not talking about autoflowers. But this short day conditions could induce flowering at any stage or any age. We want to be careful, and that's why I show those timelines, is that's when it's most advantageous, because you want a plant that can actually support uh, flowers uh, for the end result. After approximately a week, flowers begin to appear at the top of branches, post switching it to a short day. The flowering uh, phase typically lasts for about a month. Now, when we're looking at the growth experiment, which I mentioned, the um, silver nitrate, when treating with the hormones or silver uh, nitrate, female plants can be transformed into male plants, which is great for breeding purposes. The harvesting of inflorescence for can uh, cannabinoids is typically done when the pistils have withered and some of the trichomes are an amber color. If other videos going into that in more detail. If female flowers are pollinated during the flowering phase, seeds can be collected after approximately a month when they should be mature and allowing you to grow the next phase. New varieties with high CBD yield can be obtained through hybridization breeding or molecular breeding techniques, which is great ways to get new varieties while we're always seeing new things come into the marketplace. Now, different types of uh, glandular trichomes. So GT, when you see that abbreviation, that's going to stand for glandular uh, trichomes. Um, so just keep that in mind for that abbreviation. Now, scanning electron mic microscopy analysis, illustrating the different uh, glandular trichomes types on the surface of various tissues in our cannabis sativa. So we see type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. And we can see them defined right here, where type 1 is that capitate struck, stalked glandular trichome, type 3 is a capitate sessile glandular trichome, 3 is the bulbous, and 4 is the non-secretory there. Now we can see in the flowering uh, primary trichomes in this area of the plant, you're going to find uh, potentially all five, definitely as you get later into harvest. The bracts here are also going to find a five in that top portion. On the stem, you find primarily just the type 4, which don't secrete any cannabinoids, and the leaf also primary type 4. So again, just because you're finding trichomes, don't mean they're, they're the trichomes that contain the cannabinoids and terpenes many growers are seeking. So regulatory network, I don't want to get too much into the detail of this, but this is a summarized transcriptional regulatory network. And what I want you to take away from this is the complexities of this. Now, this isn't done actually on cannabis. It's done actually on tomato and sweet wormwood, which also have trichomes, which are analogous or similar uh, to cannabis. We need to see some more of that cannabis-specific research. But this is providing our starting point because we need a starting point because it's so complex. Now, where we see the arrows, those indicate an upregulation. And where we see the kind of ended kind of blunt lines there, uh, that indicates a downregulation or inhibition. So certain things, certain uh, components can upregulate things, and certain things can downregulate or suppress things. And it's how these are interacting, which is really important to better understand the full development of these trichomes and the cannabinoids and terpenes that they contain. 
So looking a little bit more at the details here of the biosynthesis, I'm going to break these apart into a little more detail. Um, we can see the basic structure, which you're hopefully visually uh, used to looking at. But then we're going to go into a little bit of that kind of that zoomed in here. So just what's occurring in this region, B is a zoom in version of that. And just what's occurring in this region is a zoom in of that. So you can see again how you want to look at it macroscopically as well as potentially microscopically. And this is another uh, schematic model here showing the struct trichrome development. Again, different researchers showing how it formations on that epidermal area there and kind of kind of forms a little bit of a bulb and then kind of forms that stalked region eventually. And again, zoomed in versions of different regions there. Great diagrams to pause the video, take a look at, or go back to the original study. Now, a structural diagram here of those that are secreting. Uh, those cannabis cholangiotrichomes are distinctive secretory, uh, secretory structures that are critical in the production and reservation of uh, cannabinoids, primarily found in the bracts, flowers of female cannabis plants. As I said, those found on the leaves, those found on the uh, main stems, they don't really secrete anything. Now, mature granular trichomes showing the extracellular storage cavity and secretory cells on the large multicellular stalk. Now, following granular trichome inhibition, postdermal cells differentiate into secretary abscission and stock cells. So what we're having here is this development, these specialized structures as we're developing this stocked region on there. It's basically causing the droplet to form on the top or the cavity to form on top where all those droplets are going to be added to. And that's what's going to swell up. And that's where a lot of those storage areas are going to be kept distinctly and physically away from the leaf and plant surface. Now, again, this is what they look like kind of if you're looking at used to looking at it through a magnifying loop. Uh, they are known as the plant chemical factories, these areas here uh, where they're secreting, synthesizing, accumulating, and storing multiple secondary metabolites, for example, cannabinoids. These structures are primarily found on the bracts and flowers of female cannabis plants, and here we can see them in high density. Now, the isolation analysis of cannabinoid glandular trichomes, CBGA and THCA are produced in both bulbous glandular trichomes and stalked ones as well. And you can see here's the bulbous ones, very, very small, and then the um, stalked ones, which you're probably more familiar with. CBC and CBN were specifically detected in bulbous um, stalked trichomes. So again, these are the ones here. And stalked glandular trichomes have higher accumulations of monoterpenes. And this is based on auto fluorescence uh, studies that were conducted there. And just as a reminder, it's uh, THCA and CBGA because that's the plant form. Um, and then that's kind of the acid form that then needs to be decarboxylated to make the active form for the receptors uh, in humans. Now, cannabinoid synthesis, uh, the synthesis have greater metabolic efficiencies in hydrophobic environments compared to aqueous ones. So lipid-based or fat-based environments are going to be the ones that are more favorable. The metabolite polysaccharide wall-bound may be a favorable microenvironment that is well-suited for THCA biosynthesis. And this could explain the abundant uh, synthesis and secretion of cannabinoids in these glandular trichomes. However, the ability of these glandular trichomes, which again are small in physical size, to produce and secrete these significant quantities of secondary metabolites still remains a mystery. So there's a lot that still needs to be studied, a lot that still needs to be better understood about these specific pathways of how these plants go about producing these. Now, the stock glandular trichome development and development trajectory of stock glandular trichomes from the uh, prodermal initiation, which is on the left here, to the sessile like intermediate with a small uh, metabolite droplet to the mature uh, over mature trichomes all the way on the right. So we know a little bit about the formation of the physical structure um, of these and how they go about those distinctive stages, but understanding more about the um, intercellular and the gene regulation um, is definitely needed. Now that trichome development, again, the first step of that trichome development is a differenti differentiation of those cells, trigger a series of cell divisions resulting in that epidermal outgrowth, that stalked formation, that physical stalked tower-like look. The exact regulatory mechanisms that trigger the development of these cells in cannabis, at least, is still unknown. So again, we know it, what kind of what happens, we just don't know what triggers it, what initiates um, that. Other species, as I said, like tomato and sweet wormwood, are providing useful comparisons, but we need to research cannabis a little bit further. Now, the cannabinoid terpene biosynthesis here. So, secretory cells uh, form this inter interconnected syncytium uh, responsible for cannabinoid and terpene biosynthesis, transport, and storage.
This syncytium is a single cell or cytoplasmic mass containing several nuclei formed by fusion of cells or by division of the nuclei. And the formation of this storage cavity will occur through de 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 elimination of the cell wall. So here we can see again this zoomed in portion, kind of what's occurring right here. We've got all these important um, organelles within the cell. We're looking at these particular regions um, here or where this is occurring, uh, giving us an idea where to start focusing some of the research. Now distribution of the uh, placids here. So when we're looking at the distribution of placids in the secretory stage of these glandular trichomes, placids move between cells via uh, apertures in the glandular trichome cell wall. And those are located right here. So like little spaces or gaps, if you will. Um, and this is right below the cell wall and leading into that storage cavity. So again, we're taking this l very zoomed in kind of approach here, but we're looking at understanding at least initially where some of these uh, distributions are occurring. Now the formation of the cannabinoids, uh, this is where CBGA likely partitions into the plasmid membrane bilayer, and cannabinoid biosynthesis occurs at the disc cell wall where THCA synthesis or CBDA synthesis uh, catalyzes CBGA to produce THCA or CBGA respectively. So keep in mind that that uh, CBG is that precursor molecule that then is made by the plant's direction into THC or CBD. Um, so again, it gets very complex here, just trying to give you a general overview and hopefully just an appreciation for what's occurring, uh, even though we tend to only look at those end products. Cannabinoids form the lipophilic metabolite droplets within the apical cell wall, creating a storage cavity in space, and ultimately that's where it's going, and that's where we start to look at our trichomes going from that clear to cloudy to potentially amber colorations. Now distribution, oops, sorry. Now the cannabinoid biosynthetic pathway here, again looking at a little bit more detail from the other researchers provided, those metabolites interact with the specialized cell wall components to form small uh, metabolite droplets that basically coalesce into a large central droplet and mature in the trichome. The high resolution electronic microscopy demonstrates that these cannabinoid secretory disc non photosynthetic uh, plastids, which are producing all of these GPs, Ps, contain unusual crystal-like lattice structure at the core. What does that look like? That's basically this kind of physical structure, which looks like basically a pattern you might see on uh, a weave pattern of, for example, of a fabric. The immunoglobe TEM transmission electron microscope using antibody-specific THCAs, localized THCAs on the surface of cell walls. So now we kind of know where to look at those surface of the cell walls, uh, those secretory disc cells underlying the storage cavity, but are not in the anti-clinical or basal cell walls. So we're developing this understanding to kind of have this delimination zone, this area of where things might be occurring, or at least eliminating some areas where they're probably not occurring. And the formation of these extracellular cavities occurs by the delimination and separation of those disc cells, walls, resulting in the wall layer that remains continuous with the plasma membrane, which is the surface of the cell wall, and a secondary, a second that remains continuous with the, with the cuticle, subcuticle layer. So we're looking at these different layers. When we're looking at the building of these structures, we're having these layers. The cell is starting to develop these separate pockets or these separate categories um, there, allowing those certain compounds to accumulate in different areas. So it's these very specifically directed specialization areas that those genes that are being activated to start to cause these separated and distinctive regions are important to develop an understanding for. Now, extracellular storage, again, to some cool macroscopic pictures here. Cannabinoid and ter terpene products are uh, warehoused in the extracellular storage cavity. These compounds are stored essentially outside and away from the plant. Important kind of key step here, hopefully you've tuned in this long, where these compounds are very physically separated from the plant, uh, physically in a different location. Yes, made by the plant, but stored kind of as far away from the plant as possible, uh, which is an interesting kind of plant evolutionary aspect of why is it developing these compounds and why are they kept so far away from the plant? Final multicellular stalks rise to glandular trichrome heads above the epidermis, giving the canvas flower their frosty appearance. So while this is a really zoomed in look to it, um, that's what a bunch of these kind of this high density is causing that frosty look to them. And they go from that clear, kind of that milky white kind of appearance. 
Now lastly, as trichomes mature, the microscopy did show that once trichomes have reached maturity, turning an amber-like color, as we can see here, resin droplets are secreted on the surface of the glandular head and the cuticle collapses inward. So this is the point at which we're looking at uh, peak maturity of those trichomes, of those kind of sec secretory compounds uh, put there. So I know this was a little bit of a detailed look. The uh, research article is going into more detail, but gives you an appreciation for that color change or those structures you might be looking at, and hopefully you're looking at in great detail what the plant's actually doing, and also a little maybe a little shocking to try to understand the research that still needs to continually be done to better understand this process.